Hello everyone welcome back to another episode of Harrison explained and today we are going to discuss sleep disorders sleep disorder is a pretty broad topic so here is a summary of what we will be covering in this video we will start off with basic sleep physiology then move on to the effect of sleep on the body physiology which will help us in understanding the pathophysiology of some diseases then finally we will have a discussion of prominent sleep disorders like narcolepsy insomnia and finally end with parasomnias which include rem sleep behavior disorder among others without wasting more time let's begin sleep is categorized in four stages n rem has 3 n1 n2 and n3 N4 was present but it has now been included in N3. NREM is followed by REM. NREM and REM together constitute one sleep cycle of approximately 2 hours. NREM constitutes a majority of sleep but you already knew that. Sorry. To determine the stage of sleep we currently use electroencephalography, EOG that is electroocculography and EMG. Progression of sleep occurs as follows. A person in wake state will first enter N1 where the EEG will show low frequency theta waves. We will be seeing all the images for all EEGs after discussing all the stages of sleep. It will help in better understanding along with comparison. Eye movements are slow and rolling and it is the lightest phase of sleep. N1 constitutes 5 to 10% of total sleep. So if this is prolonged, the DDX includes obstructive sleep apnea. N2 constitutes 45 to 55% so forming the majority. You will see theta wave frequency here. In N2 you will see two unique patterns in the EEG, spindle waves and K complexes. Benzodiazepines increase the N2 sleep. They stimulate the spindle activity primarily. N3 is what you call deep sleep. You will see low frequency high amplitude delta waves in the EEG constituting 20% of the sleep. N3 keeps decreasing in duration as the night progresses with the maximum duration in the first sleep cycle. The EEG for all stages can be confusing. So here is a comparative image of all of them. It should help in driving the key points home. REM sleep has three characteristics which are monitored by EEG, EMG and EOG. You will see a low voltage mixed pattern. Sawtooth waves are seen in this stage. Rapid eye movements will be seen by the EOG. EMG will register atonia throughout the body except for the diaphragm and extraocular muscles. Atonia is due to direct inhibition of alpha motor neurons. Here is the EEG for REM sleep. As you can see, these waves look like sawtooth, thus the name. REM disorders are seen in narcolepsy, obstructive sleep apnea, pulmonary disease and REM sleep behavior disorder or RBD. Yeah, that last one was kind of obvious. Look at this image. These are the various hormones in action during sleep. This will help in understanding the rationale behind using drugs as we move forward. The green lines are the arousal centers which keep you awake. They have monoaminergic, glutamatergic and cholinergic neurons. The blue lines are orexin neurons present in the hypothalamus and when I say they stabilize the awake state, it shouldn't come as a surprise that they are lost in narcolepsy. The red lines are sleep promoting and they have GABAergic neurons. So to treat insomnia, we will use drugs which block the green and blue lines and stimulate the red lines. One special mention here is of adenosine. It inhibits many arousal promoting regions and forms the substrate which caffeine acts upon to prevent sleep. Now that we have got the basic physiology with us, we will talk about the effects of sleep on the body. BP and heart rate decrease during NREM sleep while cardiac dysrhythmia may be seen in REM. Respiration is slow during sleep, it is regular during NREM and irregular in REM. The intracellular volume in the brain is reduced and why this happens is because during sleep the neurons fire less compared to when we are awake. Less firing translates to less ions required so intracellular ion concentration decreases leading to decrease in the intracellular volume by osmotic effects. This is confirmed by increased calcium and decreased potassium ions in the extracellular space which supports hyperpolarization and thus less firing of neurons. The reason I explained the concept behind this is because this expansion of the extracellular space is implicated in Alzheimer's disease. 
the increased extracellular volume promotes the diffusion of substances which accumulate outside like beta amyloid peptide which are supposed to be cleared by the csf flow less sleep will lead to continued accumulation of beta amyloid protein which is seen in the pathogenesis of alzheimers melatonin secretion is directly proportional to sleep in normal cases we arrive at the last section of today's video sleep disorders narcolepsy patients have problems in sustaining wakefulness throughout the day all the patients have excessive daytime sleepiness they have disturbed nocturnal sleep but feel well rested upon awakening and then feel tired throughout the day as we saw before rem sleep is affected in narcolepsy and patients can have sudden muscle weakness without any loss of consciousness usually when they face a strong emotion this characteristic is known as cataplexy patients can also have dream like hallucinations at the sleep onset or when they wake up they will also have muscle paralysis when they wake up narcolepsy typically starts between ages 10 and 20 and once established it persists for life narcolepsy has two types type 1 is narcolepsy with cataplexy while type 2 is only narcolepsy type 1 will have low levels of orexin while in type 2 orexin levels will be normal treatment is modafinil methylphenidate or dextroamphetamines are associated with sympathomimetic side effects but they are as effective cataplexy is controlled with antidepressants like venlafaxine and duloxetine now for insomnia the patient examination should focus on discovering the predisposing and precipitating factors these include psychophysiologic factors individuals worry about insomnia throughout the day and that leads to anxiety in the night time while trying to sleep they check the clock again and again which only increases anxiety and frustration inadequate sleep hygiene sleeping in the daytime reduces the sleep drive at night use of caffeine and tobacco close to bedtime also decreases the sleep drive engaging in stressful or alerting activities close to bedtime for example arguing with your partner work related calls sleeping with the phone at the bedside and using the bedroom routinely for activities besides sleep or sex so the bedroom becomes associated with stressful feelings also hinders sleep psychiatric conditions like depression and schizophrenia are also associated with insomnia use of antidepressants glucocorticoids too close to bedtime withdrawal of sedating drugs like alcohol narcotics benzodiazepines can also cause insomnia medical conditions like asthma copd cystic fibrosis heart failure are involved with a lot of pain and thus cause insomnia <laughs> treatment for insomnia should begin with addressing these factors and then if relief is not obtained we have antihistamines like diphenhydramine but can develop tolerance with repeated use benzodiazepines like zolpidem and zaleplon are indicated trazodone and amitriptyline are alternatives to benzodiazepines as they are cheaper and have lower abuse potential orexin antagonists like suvorexant are also effective rbd is distinct from the other parasomnias like sleepwalking and sleep terrors in that it occurs during the rem stage the patient or the bed partner reports agitation and violent behavior both during sleep and on waking up the patient often reports a dream which matches the accompanying movements in normal rem the muscles are paralyzed but in rbd patients punching or kicking movements occur 50% of the patients will have neurodegenerative diseases like parkinsons or dementia with lewy bodies within 12 years of rbd onset this brings us to the end of this video if you found this content useful do like and subscribe see you in the next one